I'll start from uh, deep RL basics and uh, slowly go to uh, complicated models like WTKN and PPO. We passed the first half of the course. Uh, right now we are at the step of deep reinforcement learning literacy campaign. So we go over uh, where the things come from and why and how they work and where is the neural networks there. First, we will briefly talk about history. Reinforcement learning was invented more than 50 years ago. In 1996, it was successfully applied to chess. And uh, after that, there was a number of successful and uh, groundbreaking achievements of uh, deep reinforcement learning, like winning Atari games, winning AlphaGo champion, and then <clears throat> Dota. And uh, the, the field didn't limit only to toy. Recently, so-called superhuman performance was achieved by folding the proteins. This task initially was considered to be impossible to solve by numerical computations. It was uh, solved by alpha fold, and now we have a second alpha fold, but the model is crazy huge. Then uh, it is typically used for robot navigation in the real world, so that the, the robot iteratively builds the map of the environment it is in and learns to navigate given the goal. Uh, some real cases from industry, uh, drug optimization, a newly published uh, drug by FDA went through clinical studies and uh, the deep reinforcement learning was utilized to uh, optimize the dosage given to patients. One of the applications I know was uh, oil rig uh, oil automation based on a throughput, electric power and load and uh, other factors. Uh, this course is dedicated to automatic trading. As you already might observe from the results of uh, supervised training, the accuracy F1 score is pretty miserable. Whatever you do, both feature importance changes as well as the results are very different day to day. Uh, this information is not new and I expected you to achieve the same results. It should force you to make a conclusion that it is something off with um, applications of typical machine learning to finances, especially ultra high frequency trading, because the environment itself is highly dynamic and uh, it will be impossible to prepare one successful set of features and then replicate one model because of the environment changes. So the idea that you might come to, why can't we adapt to the environment dynamically so that feature importance and the weight of the networks are changed dynamically. This is exactly the goal that reinforcement learning tries to address. It is uh, different from supervised and unsupervised in terms that the learning of supervised and unsupervised models are passive. Once you train them, they are no longer progressed while RL interacts with environment and capable of dynamic adaptation to that. The only options for supervised and unsupervised methods with changing environment are consistent retraining the models while RL can adapt uh, dynamically with the same model uh, feature set. We have to review the concept on which the field is built upon. It is Markov decision process. MGP works in the scope of agent environment in interface. Agent iteratively interacts with environment performing actions. Action at time step T is taken from a fixed set of actions A. By taking an action, agent receives from environment new state and a reward. A reward is evaluation of uh, the current action of an agent. Then agent get into the new state and performs another action. And MDP is all about the way of a selection of actions in other words, interacting with environment so that the agent can collect the maximum possible sum of rewards. If we put this interaction into the sequence, we will see the sequence of states, actions taken and the rewards received. If we describe an MDP mathematically, we will say that this is a mathematical framework for modeling of a decision making. In a situations where outcomes are partly random and partly under the control of a decision maker. Decision making is what should we do in this particular situation? What would be the best action? Situations where outcomes are 
partly random. It means the results of our actions are defined not only by agent, but also by some external forces on which we don't have any power to rule. We encode this uncertainty in a, a transition function here. The transition function is a probability that action A taken in state S will lead to expected state S if agent in a state S0 and the agent decided to take action A0, there is a, for example, 90% chance that agent will end up in state expected state S1. Otherwise, there is a 10% chance that agent will perform a random action appearing in some unexpected state different from S1. Of course, this is a simplified way to implement uncertainty, but at least something. So this uh, 0.1 or 10% of randomness for this part, outcomes are random. Other 90% under the control of a decision maker. Agent performs the action it was expected to perform. MDP has four components. First component is a set of states. Set of states known in advance and fixed. A fixed and finite state of actions. Actions, what does agent can do? If you play chess, the board or S is always the board as it was, and the figures can make moves only typical per figures. We don't change rules during the play. So the chess could be a perfect example of NDP without randomness. P is a transition function. It's also called policy. R is a reward function. A reward function says what reward the agent is granted for moving to a particular state. If we are in the scope of move from S0 to S1, we care only about this pair as well as all the future steps to somehow evaluate the value of the state. The value for future states computed based on assumption that agent will take decisions based on the same logic or policy with which he did a first move. In episodic tasks, there are a start state and a terminal state. Start state is where we begin our interaction and the terminal state is a state where the interaction with environment ends. Uh, reusing our example of chess, start state would be all figures are on their initial locations on the board and a terminal state would be one of the possible three situations, but white win or black win. There are three terminal states. To simplify and make decision-making possible, there was made of some simplifications. First uh, assumption that present state, future and past are independent. We take care only about a couple of states, totally forgetting about the past states. For Markov decision process, Markov means the action outcomes depend only on the current state. It means if we are in the S0, the reward R1 calculated based only on S0 state and future rewards. We don't care about what's in the past. Subsequently, if we are in S1, the same holds true for a1 or R2. We don't care about all the past states. So the successor function is dependent only on the current state, not on the history, and the past states are lost. Here is an example of a Markov decision process. There is an automobile, and uh, there are three states, cool, warm, and overheated. Overheated state ends the episode. The actions are move slow and move fast. The transition between states are displayed with arrows and a reward which is associated with appropriate transition is depicted with numbers about the arrow. We start in a cool state. Cool state is fine and allows us to move either slow or fast. If we are moving slow, there is no risk that the car will overheat. And if we are moving slow, we are receiving reward plus one. And there is a 100% chance that we reside in the cool state again. The goal of the exercise is to move as far as possible and as fast as possible. 
So moving slow, we are like playing low risk strategy. We are moving slow, but we are guaranteed not overheat. If we are moving fast, there is a 50% chance that the car will all overheat. But moving fast gives us twice larger reward than moving slow. In warm state, the car still can move, but if it moves fast in warm state, it will guarantee it overheat and we will get a penalty of minus 10. Yeah, the probability is one. But if we move slow, being in a warm state, there is a 50% chance that we will cool down and get back to a cool state or just reside in the same state. So what would be the best policy? Policy is how should we act? How should the car act? The optimal policy would be the following. If we are in a cool state, we are moving always fast until we are in a warm state because this maximizes the reward. If we got into the warm state, we are always moving slow because we either reside in the warm state or get cooled down and get back to the cool state. But once we got back to the cool state, we again always moving fast because that maximizes our reward. This is optimal policy. If we put this example on the diagram I presented before, it will look like this. Imagine that our initial state was cool, then we performed action slow, received reward plus one, and appeared in a state S1, which is also cool. But then we tried to move fast and got guaranteed reward plus two, but then hit a chance of 50% getting warm, got warm, transitioned to the S2, being an S2, decided to move fast again, tangent overheated, got a reward minus 10, and the episode ended. Because the car overheated, overheated car cannot move any further. This state is called terminal state. What we do in terminal state, starting new episode. Will we be smarter in the new episode? Possibly, possibly not. But we hope that the driver will learn with experience. So the same reinforcement learning does it in episodical environment, which trading also is. It performs a number of episodes and uh, slowly adapts and learns how to act optimally in, in the environment. I will continue with demonstrating the code. I will show you what is MDP interface and what is gym environment.